That's how I'd like to start is by paying my respects and acknowledging the past custodians who always lived here and walked this land. On every road that we see, every house that we see, covers the footprints, thousands of years of footprints of our Indigenous people. My family came in here and I read even an old diary that said, grandfather selected the land because it was prime location near the water and and this is where we come in and we said, oh, we're going to select land. Now, number one, when we say we're selecting land, we're not paying for that land. We've just gone in. As white fellows in Brisbane, they could look up on the board and say, we can go down to the larger Bunya country now, which this was all called Bunya country, and we can take land. And my great-grandfather said, oh, I like a prime position near water, prime farming land, soil. What about the people who live there? What about the animals that live there? What about the ecosystem that's, that was there for thousands of years before we decided to come in, cut down everything and build sugarcane? Um, I'm here today to, to say sorry, but sorry is just one word. And I know like we looked at our government, oh, and Kevin Rudd said sorry, which is the National Apology Day that's coming up. But there's much more to just the word sorry. We have to really start acknowledging our history. My grandfather was born in 1917, but the year that he was born, in 1917 in Mumbai, Lyndon's great-grandmother was being removed off Maruchi River at 66 years old because white fellas implemented a law that no Aboriginal people could live in this country. We removed them right, right, right out, way out in the middle of Nowhere, well, wasn't their country. And Lyndon, some of Lyndon's aunties were removed from Budrum in 1902, right out to a place called um, Deving Creek. And they walked home. They got their babies on their back and they walked all the way home to Budrum. And then when they were found there again, they removed them women back again to where they've never been found and the children. And and to know that Lyndon's family were being forcibly removed out of this country at the same time that my family were moving in and taking over, it sits not nice in your, somewhere in your belly. I want to say sorry for all the past atrocities of my people. And I, I want to let you know that when I found a um, diary after my nan passed away, it was online. It was horrible to read it. Her cousin had written it and he said about Grandfather Nuttall's farm. My great grandfather came to Nambour. Like I said, he selected this land. And he said they built the first Queenslander. Every Queenslander had a gun room in case the blacks became ah! aggressive. And so then this was the words that would say, um, the people would be back in due course to take back their land. This means that right from the late 1800s when we were coming in and taking land, we were aware that it, who it belonged to. And this whole notion of native title and land rights is not some new thing. But we were scared Aboriginal people were gonna come back and take back their land and it said in prudent time they'll be back to take back their land. So we're riding back then, it is their land. We know whose land it is. Now we can try and make all these little excuses. Now, in this diary, it says the axe grinding grooves, which, you know, your axe grinding grooves in your sandstone outcrop, was at two metres from the back door of my great grandfather's land. He selected this land in 1889. And then the Second World War, we're talking 50 years after he's had this land, he gets so scared that they're coming back to claim it that if they get the son-in-law and they go and blow up all the axe grinding grooves with gelignite. Hadn't seen it being used since 1900, but this fear that they were going to get caught with artefacts. Now this. This is an attitude that still I hear today. People will dig up an artefact in their backyard and say, don't tell anybody, bury it, 
they'll be back to claim their land. And now we have all a duty of care. With this comes responsibility of caring for country. We can't just go, oh, that's their job and we're just here. No, if we're Australians and we love this land, well then we're to look after it. And one way is to learn the stories of our Indigenous people. And, um, and we can only move forward from there.